Uh, we'll, we'll go over a simple technique for uh, tibia acute deformity correction, as well as sagittal plane correction and multiplanar gradual correction. Uh, there is some uh, assumption that uh, the joint orientation angles that Taylor was uh, describing are, are known, or at least uh, you guys have seen that before. So here's a, a pretty simple case, a 44-year-old female nurse who's very active. She presents with medial uh, joint line pain, and she, all, she has all the indications and no contraindications for an HTO or non-arthroplasty option. So we do our um, complete uh, radiographic examination uh, for the lower extremities, including the mechanical axis uh, assessment. And in this case, she's in varus. Uh, here's her MAD or mechanical axis deviation of 23 medial. And again, step two of that test is actually determining where the varus is coming from. So in this case, like Taylor showed uh, on, on his um, x-rays, this patient has an MPTA of 82 and a normal LDFA of 86. So she has a varus limbs coming from varus proximal tibias. And I like what Taylor did with the joint line convergence angle, um, and at least highlighting that this patient really doesn't have any pathology uh, in the joint itself. So this is the patient who has proximal tibia varus, and we're gonna do, again, stage bilateral treatment. Uh, we're gonna do a medial opening wedge osteotomy, and we're gonna plan this according to the mechanical axis. So we're gonna plan the case by moving the mechanical axis to the lateral tibial spine. This diagram's from Paley's textbook. I really like it. Um, it basically says, you know, angles are formed by the intersection of two lines and lines are formed by an intersection of two dots. So for deformity correction, whether you're doing um, virtual CAD-like software planning or, or just mechanical um, or analog planning, you, you still need to understand how to draw these axes. And even with the new hexapod softwares, drawing the axis is, is very important. So for her, we're gonna take this yellow line from the center of the femoral head, and we're gonna, we're, we're gonna pretend to be God and push it to the lateral tibial spine. So this basically says where her ankle should be. So this is the future proposed mechanical axis of the limb. So that's this yellow line. That's the proximal axis. The distal axis can just tell you the you know, febrile and tibial angle of her uh, deformity and also highlight what Taylor said is the magnitude of her varus. So this patient would say has a femoral tibia varus of eight degrees. This is typical in arthroplasty, what they would say in a patient who has varus. This doesn't really help you with your uh, planning yet. So in this case for the tibia, again, similar to what Taylor said before for the femur, we're gonna choose our hinge point. And these techniques are very well described at this, the top of the um, fibular head. We're gonna draw from the future ankle to that hinge, from the current ankle to that hinge. That's gonna generate a magnitude of correction. And then you just convert that uh, on a calibrated image and it can tell you uh, what degree of wedge you need. In this case, it's an eight degree correction. We need to open that wedge uh, 6.4 millimeters. Now in the OR, I'll admit I'm a bit of a, uh, I would say a loser because I can't really open 6.4 millimeters, but this is where, you know, custom cutting jigs, which I don't use, uh, and more maybe navigation in the future can help us get accurate uh, correction. So I do an open um, uh, proximal tibia osteotomy. Again, just aiming for the top of the fibula, putting a laminar spreader in, measuring the uh, amount of correction, ensuring you don't change the sagittal alignment. And then I, I still check, uh, make sure my mechanical axis is aiming for the lateral tibial spine and then secure it with a, a locking plate to make sure it uh, holds the deformity. So that's uh, her after uh, both, both sides were done. You can see the lateral tibial spine, the red line is her new mechanical axis. So sagittal plane. So again, uh, deformity assessment is also clinical. Here's the patient's a normal side. She has about zero plus five extension. The abnormal side, she has a hyperextension deformity, which um, is consistent with her radiographic deformity. So this is her uh, abnormal side, a lateral x-ray, a nice x-ray uh, calibrated. You can see the whole tibia on one cassette. 
And we're going to look at the sagittal joint orientation angles, the PPTA and ADTA to help uh, plan our deformity correction. So I looked at our contralateral normal side, which is about 85 degrees. And here's basically the calculation of how to identify the, the apex of the deformity or the center of rotation of angulation, i.e. the cora. And uh, you can help make your osteotomy there and also determine how you want to treat this. So I'm just dropping down a PPTA that is normal, about 85 degrees. I'm sending up an ADTA of 82 in this case. And then you can measure the magnitude of the deformity, in this case, 15 degrees. And I also can check, well, that's where I'm going to make my osteotomy and measure 71 uh, millimeters from the joint line. So she has a proximal open physis, so I don't want to use an IM nail for this. Uh, it's sagittal plane, so for me, I like uh, ring fixators. Uh, it's easier for me to control uh, this large deformity. So execution in the OR, just mark the uh, osteotomy location, uh, mount a ring fixator, and uh, enter the numbers in a computer. And the program will do it for you, for all of you who uh, like hexapods. This is really quite easy because uh, the computer will just generate the program and get the correction for you. So here's her at the beginning. Here's after the deformity correction. And here's the final x-rays with a, uh, a normal sagittal plane uh, restored and a normal uh, clinical exam because she really, really did not like this hyperextension feeling. She actually presented that she thought her knee was dislocating. So complicated uh, deformities. This is a case. I love this case. This is from uh, when I was in Chicago with Taylor. And um, this patient was scheduled for a total knee. And you can see patient, a lot of valgus, 69-year-old, uh, uh, radiographic evidence of uh, um, knee arthritis, but had this old IM nail and potentially this extra articular deformity. So you have to examine patients. Again, going to clinical exam, and you can see He's got a lot of uh, issues. He had tibial torsion. He had a limb length discrepancy and uh, extra articular valgus uh, deformity. So again, looking at these joint orientation angles in the um, uh, coronal plane and sagittal plane, again, we're looking at the MPTA on average about 87 and the PPTA on average about 81. So getting proper x-rays is important. You can see here on the left, I'm using simple daphyseal angles to identify the apex of the deformity, which is in the center of the tibia. That's not really gonna help me unless I'm interested in digging out this old nail or cutting his tibia and this nail in half because I can't really do my deformity correction there. The procravatum pro deformity looks nice because it's away from the IM nail and it's a magnitude of 14 degrees. So I can see, well, he's got a procravatum deformity. He has a coronal deformity. And on his hip to ankle x-rays, he has about a 42 millimeter deformity. So now we have a coronal plane, sagittal plane, and axial plane. He has length and rotation. So he has four plane deformity. This is a no brainer for a, a hexapod fixator. So we can actually plan again using a mechanical axis. And let's say I just, I want his mechanical axis to go through the center of the knee. I'm not gonna do daphyseal uh, angular corrections. I can send a line up with an appropriate uh, LDTA and his uh, osteotomy can be made uh, nicely uh, just above the, the uh, nail. So again, we, we ensure we identify all components of his deformity and measure them. Uh, just crack his tibia percutaneously above the IM rod. And again, the plan was to do this, get his legs straight, and then the arthroplasty surgeons can do a normal, quote, easier total knee. And again, it doesn't really matter that it's a complicated deformity because it's a computer that drives the deformity correction. So here's him at the end. He's got his coronal plane restored, sagittal plane restored, axial plane restored, uh, length restored, as well as torsion. And I, I always email him every year and uh, he's doing really, really great. So, you know, not all tibial osteotomies are, quote, HTOs. I think routine clinical radiographic deformity analysis is mandatory for all patients, whether they're sent you for just a, quote, routine osteotomy. And again, tailor the treatment according to the diagnosis. And multiplanar deformities are easily treated with uh, hexapod fixators.